talked about uh, division and what does it mean for a number like 2 to not divide into 7. Basically means you have a remainder left over. Uh, you've been doing long division on integers for a while, so I'm not going to go over uh, long division for numbers, but we will go over it for polynomials. So let's look at how in the world do we do uh, long division. Actually, maybe I'll do it just for 7 and 2. I better pick a bigger number. Let's do uh, let's do two and fifteen. No, two and twenty-one. There we go. So we'll do twenty-one uh, divided by two, long division. So what do I do first? Two goes into you look at the first digit just by itself. Two goes into two one time. One times two is two. You bring down your second. Uh, Doing this right, you bring down, uh oh. Subtract, we get zero. Now I bring down, now I bring down the one. So now two goes into one zero times. So there's no more basically dividing because two doesn't go back into one. That is the remainder. Now, if you actually divide in evenly, you'll get a remainder 0 at the end. So for example, if that digit was another 2 or 4, I would be able to divide in again. Oh wait, what am I doing wrong? You didn't. You have to. Oh, there we go. It goes in 0 times. And then I'm going to write remainder 1. So that would be the long division right there. So any questions on that long division? Should be things you've done many times before. All right, so this key right here, remainder, we're going to shift into polynomials now. So let's do a really fast poll. Who's done polynomial division before? Who's done synthetic division before? All right, pretty much the same number of people. OK, so I'm going to do polynomial division. I'm not going to do synthetic division. Synthetic division is great if you're dividing in a linear uh, term that has a, just a x plus or minus something. So it's very restrictive. So for that reason, I'm going to do long division instead of synthetic division. So I'm only going to teach polynomial division, not synthetic division. You're welcome to go learn it on your own, but you do not need it, and it's more restrictive than just general polynomial division. So here we go. So I'm going to start with the question, is x minus 3 a factor of the polynomial p of x equals 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 8? So if we think about division, how would I determine if this term is a factor of this polynomial? I would, of course, divide. And I would see, is the remainder 0 or is the remainder not 0? So that's one way to determine factor or not factor. Do a long division and then see what the remainder is. There's a big theorem we looked at last section. So I called it a big theorem. Does anybody remember that theorem? I know you didn't need it on your midterm. There was four statements that were all equivalent. One of them was you have a factor. For example, x minus 3 is a factor of the polynomial exactly when what happens? x equals r is 0. Yep, so zeros correspond to factors. So polynomial zeros correspond to polynomial zeros. Whoa, polynomial factors. I'll just write factors on this side. All right, so our factor is x minus 3. What 0 would that correspond to? So it should be x equals 3. The x value that would make your factor 0. All right, so this is going to be a factor exactly when x equals 3 is a 0. 
So another way to test if you have a factor is, does the x value uh, in that factor make your polynomial 0? So this is a faster way to determine if we got a factor or not. So let's do the faster way first. So I want you to check, is x equals 3 a 0 of this polynomial on the board? So go ahead and plug in 3, and tell me do you get 0, do you not get 0? You got 100? Yes. All right. You probably got a different way. I used algebra instead of arithmetic because I'm bad at arithmetic. All right. 100 is definitely not zero. So this should not be a factor. So let's check that with division now. So I know, I'm expecting my remainder to not be 0 when I divide. So we're going to go ahead and perform that division. So we're going to go ahead and divide. So the term we're dividing by is x minus 3, and the polynomial is right there on the top of the board, 2x cubed plus 6x squared. Now there's a term missing. So there's a term not in the polynomial. What degree term is not in this polynomial? X. X, so first degree. So what I'm going to do is write some x's. How many x's, if I want to write down the polynomial that's the same, how many x's? So we got zero. So I'm doing this for a placeholder and then minus 8. So missing terms should still be written. Now if I didn't have an x squared term, I'd write 0x squared. If I had no constant term, I would just write plus 0 at the very end. So whatever, you may have more than one term missing. It's easy to know if you get a term missing, you have degree 3 polynomial, you shouldn't have three terms, you should have four terms total, because there's a degree 0 term. So whatever your degree is, you should have one more than that number of terms. All right, let's go ahead and divide. So I'm going to do this division uh, very carefully. And then the other divisions we do, I'll do them a little faster. So if this is your first polynomial division. What we're going to do is look at the first term. What do I need to multiply x by to get to 2x cubed? 2x squared. Very good. 2x squared. Generally, your leading term is going to be x. So you'll basically need the term you're trying to uh, get to, just one less power of x. So I see 2x cubed, and I'm going to need 2x squared. It's generally how it's going to work. Now, <clears throat> we multiply 2x squared, we multiply into here, and then write that result down below. It's the same steps we do for long division. 
So 2x squared times x, that's 2x cubed, the entire reason we did this. There's a second term, minus 6x squared. So any questions on that uh, product right there? Now what happens if I add this? I'd have 4x cubed plus 0x squared. That's not what I should be getting. So don't do this. What should I be doing instead? Subtracting. All right, so we're going to subtract. Just like regular long division, you're subtracting this term out. So now we have zero x cubes, which of course that was our goal, to knock out our x cubes. So I'm just going to write 6x squared plus 6x squared. That's 12, positive 12x squared, bringing down the 0x. You don't need to write plus 12 squared. So you're always bringing down, after you subtract, you're bringing down your next before it was digits, now it's just next term. You're basically treating terms like they're digits. All right, what do I multiply x by to get 12x squared? 12x. 12x, you're just basically dropping the power by one. So multiply by 12x, that's gonna be a positive 12x. Now multiply 12x times x minus three. It's 12x squared minus a lot of x's, 36 x's, and we're always subtracting here. So we got 0 x squared plus 36 x minus 8. So what do I multiply x by to get the 36 x? 36. So it's plus 36, so now 36x minus a lot, 108, subtract, 36 cancels, minus 8 plus 108, we got 116. Wouldn't it be 100? Sure, yes, 100. Any questions on that step? What if I try to keep going? So don't write this down. I'm going to keep going. What would I multiply x by to get 100? You can do it. What do I multiply x by to get 100? It's got 100 in it. 100 over x. That right there should be indication you need to stop. So once you get to your constant term, the only way to get rid of your constant term would be to multiply by something over x. So that's where you need to stop right there. That's the end. So we got remainder. So I'm writing R100. Just that same notation we used before, remainder 100. OK, you survived your first polynomial division. What does this mean if we put it back together in a product form? Well, if I leave it in the division form, oh no, that's not what I meant to write. I meant to write the original. 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 0x minus 8 equals Actually, we'll leave it in the division form first, then I'll rewrite it. So we divided by x minus 3, and this equaled 2x squared two x squared plus 12x plus 36. Now, how do we deal with remainders? The remainder we had was 100 divided by x minus 3. So that's how we would deal with remainders. Now if you want to go back to the good old days of numbers for a minute, that's 
totally fine. This would be the same thing as writing 7 over 2 equals 3 plus 1 half. So if we went back to numbers, this is what everything would look like. We took our original number, original thing, divided by 2, and we said there was 3 of them with 1 left over. What does your remainder look like? It looks like the remainder over your divisor. So the only difference is things are polynomials now. The form stays the same. So hopefully that helps out a little bit with the way division looks. So now I'm going to erase the numbers. You can leave them on your paper if you want. I don't personally like fractions. What can I multiply to get out of fractions here? What can I multiply both sides by so I don't have fractions anymore? X minus 3. X minus 3. So I'll multiply everything by X minus 3. Now I have to be careful. with our parentheses. So our original term that was not a fraction turned into that product down below because we just multiplied every term by x minus 3. So those two original fractions, they lost their denominators and that one term picked up an extra factor. Here's where you can see the remainder theorem in action. So on the left side we have p of x. So I could write p of x like this. This is our original polynomial we were dealing with. It's a little bit strange, but in this form, what we did was figure out what is p of 3. Why is, p, why is 3 very easy to plug in in this form? Because it's going to zero out our first factor. So all the, this part right here, all turns into 0. So the entire first part is 0, and we are just left with that 100 right there. So this is the remainder theorem in action. So I don't extensively use the remainder theorem, but the remainder theorem says if you divide out by that factor and you plug in that number, you'll get out the remainder out of your polynomial. Uh, the theorem we will use quite a bit is uh, the rational zero theorem. So how in the world are we going to pick what number uh, would make a polynomial zero? So if we go way back to our original polynomial. So we know x minus 3 is not a factor. How do we go about figuring out what x values make this equal to 0? You have a very powerful tool for quadratics. You either go complete the square or quadratic formula, which is basically complete the square. We don't have that in degree 3 or higher. So in degree 3 or higher, the way we're going to get zeros is the rational zero theorem. So I'm going to write that down now. You're going to use it a bunch, so we'll abbreviate it with RZT. This is going to find rational zeros if they exist. So there is two parts to the rational zero theorem. So degree n polynomial has at most n zeros. Uh, if your polynomial is written in this form, which is a standard polynomial form, we'll do high power term first, a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 a1x plus a0. 
So if your polynomial is in this form, and all of the a n, a n minus one, all the way down to a zero are all integers, meaning whole numbers, not decimals or fractions. And if p of x has rational zeros, then the zeros are going to be of the form x equals p over q, where p, so the numerator, will be a factor of a zero. And q is a factor of a n. So it's kind of strange. The leading coefficient and the trailing coefficient play a very big role in the rational zero theorem. Oh, I use the letter P for two different things. Let's fix that. Let's take that second P and turn it into an R. I think that'll be the easiest fix. So R is a factor of A0, and Q is a factor of AN. So this is a rational zero theorem. There's a pretty good chance you'll use it on your next quiz, which most likely be on polynomials. The name of the entire chapter is polynomials. So let's go and find some rational zeros. So we'll take a degree four polynomial, two x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 6. Use the rational zero theorem to write out all possible rational zeros. So our form is x equals r over q, where r is factor of, so in this case the numerator is a factor of the constant term. I'm reading right off the top right there. So r is a factor of the constant term, which is 6. And denominator q is factor of 2. So I'm going to build factor trees. It's a little silly for 2. So there is no factor tree for 2. So factors of 6 are 2, 3, also 6 and 1, and factors of 2 are just 2 and 1. Every number has got itself and 1 as factors. So I'm going to list all factors of 6. And I'm using uh, curly brackets to list them. And I'll put them in increasing order. 1, 2, 3, 6. Factors of 2 are just 1 and 2. So I'm just writing out factors of 6, factors of 2. It's a little silly for a factor tree. Numbers like uh, this small, but for example, maybe you have 12 or a larger number like that maybe more useful to write out factor trees. So I'm going to write all combinations. So I'll take the uh, numerator 1 first. So we got 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 6, 1. And now I'm going to take numerator, uh, denominator 2. So we have 1 half, 
two halves, three halves, six halves. There's a lot of repeats on this list. So let's reduce them and take out the repeats. So obviously I don't have to write it over one, over one, over one, over one. So reduce and eliminate repeats. We got one, two, three, six, one half. Why don't I need two halves? Because that's, that's one. So I don't have three halves. Six halves, however, is just three. That's already on the list. So you're generally going to see repeats. So here's our list. Unfortunately, we have to try plus and minus each of these. So I'll rewrite the polynomial. 2x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 6. How many zeros could I have at the most in this polynomial? Four. four. Could have up to four. But that's up to four, not necessarily four. When we get to complex numbers, there's always going to be four zeros, but they won't always be rational or real. Sometimes they'll be complex. So there are going to be four zeros. There also can be repeats. We've seen that before. So what's the easiest number on the list to plug into the function? One. So let's plug in one, and then we'll plug in minus one. And then we'll go jump to two, minus two, three, minus three. So always go easiest to more difficult. All right, so plug in one and see what you get. One fast way to do this, you're basically adding up coefficients when you plug in one. It's a really fast way to plug in one. <coughs> so what number did you get? Zero? Four, right? Yeah. All right. But remember, I was looking basically zero or not zero. So if you got four or five or six, any of those values, you know it's not zero. So I'm not going to write the actual value, but I know just looking, there's more positive stuff than negative stuff. So I know it's going to be greater than zero. You could write the number four, absolutely, but sometimes you're going to have more numbers to add together that you don't feel like adding, especially if some of them get a little bit bigger. For example, when I plug in two, these are going to be a lot larger values. All right, so not zero. Now we're going to plug in negative one. You should get zero for negative one. So if I want to find all the rational zeros, I have to go down the list, and there's basically plus or minus for each of the additional numbers on that list. I'm not going to necessarily have much fun cubing or taking three halves of the fourth power and the third power and then adding it all together. So this could take quite a while if I just apply the rational zero theorem and test all these rational zeros. There is a better way. We just found a zero. What does that mean about factors of p? We know about a factor of p. What factor do we know about? Big theorem. We got a zero, so we have a factor. What factor is it? So our zero is x equals negative one. That's what we just figured out. What factor does that correspond to? X plus one. So zeros correspond to factors. The way I remember it, it's the x value that makes your factor zero. So negative one is the value that makes the factor I wrote down zero. 
And what do we do with factors? We divide. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're expecting a remainder 0. If we don't get a remainder 0, we screwed up somewhere. Either we didn't divide correctly, we didn't, this wasn't actually 0. So one of those two is most likely the mistake. So we're going to divide now. So we're going to do our original p of x over x plus 1. So our original p of x, 2x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 6. So what do I multiply x by to get 2x to the fourth? 2x to the third. 2x cubed. So 2x cubed times x is 2x to the fourth plus 2 2x cubed times 1 is 2x cubed. Make sure you subtract or else you're not doing division. So 3x cubed minus 2x cubed is minus 5x cubed. Now we bring down minus 6x squared. And what do I multiply x by? to get negative 5x cubed. Negative 5x squared. Negative 5x squared. So I want you to do the rest of this problem right now. And your very last step, you should be getting down to remainder 0. So I'll write that on the board. And it's a good time to ask for help. So if your remainder is not zero, look at your neighbor's paper. Hopefully their remainder is zero, and you can figure out where your mistake is. There is a chance you maybe wrote 6x instead of 5x. That will screw everything up. So one little mistake of writing it down one number or a minus where it should be a plus will mess everything up. That's what your zero remainder should be. Any 
questions on the division. So this lets me rewrite p of x. So here we're factoring. And we just got that p of x equals x plus 